Now Winter Nights Enlarge by Thomas Campion, read by Brit Herring. Now winter nights enlarge this number of their hours, and clouds their storms discharge upon the airy towers. Let now the chimneys blaze, and cups o'erflow with wine. Let well-tuned words amaze with harmony divine. Now yellow waxen lights shall wait on honey love, while youthful revels, masks, and courtly sights sleep's leaden spells remove. This time doth well dispense with lovers' long discourse. Much speech hath some defense, though beauty no remorse. All do not all things well. Some measures comely tread, some knotted riddles tell, some poems smoothly read. The summer hath his joys, and winter his delights. Though love and all his pleasures are but toys, they shorten tedious nights. Spellbound by Emily Bronte Read by Dawn Ursula The night is darkening round me. The wild winds coldly blow. But a tyrant spell has bound me, and I cannot cannot go. The giant trees are bending, their bare boughs weighed with snow, and the storm is fast descending. And yet I cannot go. Clouds beyond clouds above me, wastes beyond wastes below, but nothing drear can move me. I will not, cannot go. A Loss by Oscar Wilde Read by Brian Hemmingson To drift with every passion Till my soul is a stringed lute On which all winds can play. Is it for this that I have given away Mine ancient wisdom and austere control? Methinks my life is a twice-written scroll, scrawled over on some boyish holiday, with idle songs for pipe and virile, which do but mar the secret of the whole. Surely there was a time I might have trod the sunlit heights, and from life's dissonance struck one clear chord to reach the ears of God. Is that time dead? Lo. With a little rod, I did but touch the honey of romance. And must I lose a soul's inheritance? Winter Branches by Margaret Widmer, read by Ryan DeLuson. When winter time grows weary, I lift my eyes on high and see the black trees standing, stripped clear against the sky. They stand there very silent, with the cold flushed sky behind. The little twigs flare beautiful and restful and kind. Clear cut and certain they rise with summer past. For all that trees can ever learn they know now, at last. Slim and black and wonderful, with all unrest gone by, the stripped tree boughs comfort me, drawn clear against the sky. Winter Fields by John Clare, narrated by Kimberly Schraff. Oh, for a pleasant book to cheat the sway of winter, where rich mirth with hearty laugh listens and rubs his legs on corner seat. For fields are mire and sludge, and badly off are those who on their pudgy paths delay. There striding shepherd seeking driest way 
fearing night's wet-shod feet and hacking cough that keeps him wakened till the peep of day goes shouldering onward and with ready hook progs oft to ford the sloughs that nearly meet across the lands. Crudling and thin to view, his loath dog follows, stops and quakes and looks for better roads till whistled to pursue. Then on with frequent jump, he hurkles through. Sonnet to Winter by Emily Chubbuck Judson Read by Celeste Lawson Thy brow is girt, thy robe with gems inwove, And palaces of frostwork on the eye flash out And gleam in every gorgeous dye The pencil dipped in glorious things above Can bring to earth. O oh, thou art passing fair, but cold and cheerless as the heart of death, without one warm free pulse, one softening breath, one soothing whisper for the ear of care. Fortune, too, has her winter. In the spring we watch the bud of promise, and the flower looks out upon us at the summer hour and autumn days the blessed harvest bring. Then comes the rain of jewels rare and gold, when brows flash light, but hearts grow strangely cold. Blow, blow, thou winter wind, by William Shakespeare, read by Chuck Young. Blow, blow, thou winter wind, thou art not so unkind as man's ingratitude. Thy tooth is not so keen, because thou art not seen, although thy breath be rude. Hey, ho, sing, hey, ho, unto the green holly. Most friendship is feigning, most loving mere folly. Then hey, ho, the holly, this life is most jolly. Freeze, freeze, thou bitter sky, that does not bite so nigh as benefits forgot. Though thou the waters warp, thy sting is not so sharp as friend remembered not. Hey ho, sing hey ho unto the green holly. Most friendship is feigning, most loving mere folly. Then hey ho the holly, this life is most jolly. A Winter Blue Jay by Sarah Teasdale, narrated by Laura Gianarelli. Crisply the bright snow whispered, crunching beneath our feet. Behind us, as we walked along the parkway, our shadows danced, fantastic shapes in vivid blue. Across the lake, the skaters flew to and fro, with sharp turns weaving a frail, invisible net. In ecstasy, the earth drank the silver sunlight. In ecstasy, the skaters drank the wine of speed. In ecstasy, we laughed, drinking the wine of love. Had not the music of our joy sounded its highest note? But no, for suddenly with lifted eyes you said, Oh, look! There, on the black bough of a snow-flecked maple, Fearless and gay as our love, a blue jay cocked his crest. Oh, who can tell the range of joy or set the bounds of beauty? Hi, I'm Michael Rosado, and this poem is called Winter by Walter de la Mare. And the robin flew into the air, the air the white mist through, and small and rare the night frost fell into the calm and misty dell, and the dusk gathered low, and the silver moon and stars on the frozen snow drew taper bars, kindled winking fires in the hooded briars, and the sprawling bear growled deep in the sky, 
and Orion's hair streamed sparkling by, but the north sighed low, snow, snow, more snow. The Snowstorm by Ralph Waldo Emerson 1803 to 1882 Read for you by Michael Kramer Announced by all the trumpets of the sky Arrives the snow And driving o'er the fields Seems nowhere to alight The whited air hides hills and woods The river and the heaven And veils the farmhouse at the garden's end the sled and traveler stopped, the courier's feet delayed, all friends shut out. The housemates sit around the radiant fireplace, enclosed in a tumultuous privacy of storm. Come see the north wind's masonry. Out of an unseen quarry, evermore furnished with tile, the fierce artificer curves his white bastions with projected roof round every windward stake or tree or door. Speeding, the myriad-handed, his wild work so fanciful, so savage, naught cares he for number or proportion. Mockingly, on coop or kennel, he hangs parian wreaths. A swan-like form invests the hidden thorn, fills up the farmer's lane from wall to wall, maugre the farmer's size. And at the gate, a tapering turret o'ertops the work. And when his hours are numbered, and the world is all his own, retiring as he were not, leaves when the sun appears, astonished art, to mimic in slow structures, stone by stone, built in an age, the mad wind's nightwork, the frolic architecture of the snow.